How's it going Star Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, where today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Void Source. It's a twin stick shoot em up title which unlike traditional shmups allows you to fire in any direction and sees you traversing through a range of environments, destroying anything in your way. With 25 weapons and a bunch of different bosses to beat, Void Source sounds like quite a promising title, but let's get into this review and look a little deeper. So Void Source has been ported from a Steam title which had been sat in development since August 2017, and according to a review on the Steam listing, the game appeared to have been abandoned. A response from one of the developers in August this year said that they'd actually updated the game to its full release, despite it still not being really finished. And so it released yesterday on the Nintendo Switch, and has retained its mouse cursor controls for navigating menus and the game's map screen, where you can select and play any of the game's 12 levels in any order. Getting into my first mission then, an underwater level, it was apparent right away that the game had been created on a bit of a budget and its visuals all appeared to feature different art styles. Now this first level saw me traversing across the seabed with the camera panning to follow me, and a small radar in the top right corner showed upcoming enemies as red dots. In the top left corner, from top to bottom was displayed my score, remaining lives, current weapon type and weapon power level, as well as a combo meter which increased whenever my shots hit anything, which multiplied the amount of points that I earned from killing enemies. Now you begin the game with a standard machine gun weapon which can be fired in any direction by aiming your right thumbstick while the left thumbstick controls your movement. Unlike many traditional shmups where pickups are dropped from enemies after you destroy them, in Void Source the developer has instead opted to make pickups constantly fall from the top of the screen, which means you're able to sit around at the start of many levels and collect a bunch of them before proceeding onward, but it also has its downsides which we'll get onto shortly. Now these pickups include ones which restore your health, indicated by a green bar above your ship, a shield pickup which fills a blue bar below your ship, allowing you to hold B to activate your shield, blocking incoming shots, and there are also a couple of green power-ups which surround you, damaging nearby enemies. Finally, there are weapon pickups, which to begin with only include the machine gun, and picking up multiple weapons of the same kind increases the power level, which maxes out at level 5. It's worth noting though that dying resets this to zero, and if you're using any other weapon it'll be changed back to the standard machine gun. So the objective in each level is to keep travelling to the right, grabbing power-ups and destroying enemies as you go until you reach the end of the level, at which point it will simply end or you'll face off against the end of level boss. Some of the stages pan the camera with you and others are auto-scrollers, and there are some stages which mix the two together. I believe the main goal in the game is to clear every stage, at which point I presume it's mission complete, the game ends, job done. But despite the main game mode being called story mode, there's actually no story whatsoever in Void Source, and even the eShop description is void of any source material. <laughs> you get it? The game's called Void Source. Uh... Anyway, so as far as my gameplay experience with Void Source went, I'm going to put it out there now that this is the worst shmup I've played in a long time, and I'll provide you with my reasons for this in a moment. But first let's take a look at the in-game skill tree which allows you to unlock additional weapons to be used in levels. Now there's some decent variety to the weapons in the game, each with their own projectile patterns, but once again, unlike traditional shmups, you don't actually get to select your weapon in Void Source, and instead the weapons you unlock appear as pickups falling from the sky. But here's where the issue I mentioned earlier comes into play. You might get yourself a good weapon and be happily blasting away at enemies, but then out of nowhere a standard machine gun power-up will fall down onto you, and you're back to using that piece of shit until you can grab a better gun. Now I use the term better gun very loosely as the majority of the weapons in the game are actually pretty shy and most of them deal next to no damage, and there's nothing to indicate which are the better weapons so it's pot luck until you memorise which ones to grab and which ones to avoid. So now let's get on to why I think the game is so bad. I'll start with the movement of your ship which instead of feeling tight, allowing for accurate movement, instead constantly feels like you're skating on ice, so when you're trying to weave your way through torrents of bullets or down tight cave tunnels, you often just end up sliding your way into them. 
Moving on next to the level designs, while there's some decent variety to them, most of them can just be cheesed by sitting in the top corner of the screen. Most of the enemies will simply pass you by, missing you with the shots. And in fact, you can use this exact method in the game's first bridge level to obtain enough credits to instantly unlock every weapon in the skill tree. Not that this will help you though, as the bosses in the game are a bit of a joke. Not only do they have about a million hit points for you to slowly chip away at, they also have tiny hitboxes which don't even register half of your hits on them. You have things like this underwater boss whose fans pull your ship all over the place, this turret boss which is featured in two of the game's levels, whose hitbox sits at the end of its cannon, and then halfway through the battle it sticks up a shield which rebounds most of your shots. And the pierce de resistance is this fucking scrapyard bot with a tiny head for a hitbox, who runs backwards and forwards across the bottom of the screen firing homing missiles at you. Now if you weren't happy just facing these bosses at the end of levels, then you'll be overjoyed to learn that the game also features a boss rush mode, which allows you to roll the dice and face a gauntlet of bosses one by one. How much fun does that sound? So overall, to me, Void Source felt more like a my first schmuck game than anything else. And while it tries some unconventional methods with its gameplay mechanics, sadly they just don't work and the game is left just feeling unfinished, unbalanced and lacking any real polish. Visually, I've already said it felt like a mishmash of different art styles, some being cartoony looking whilst others are more realistic, and the game suffers from severe frame rate drops whenever there are too many objects on screen. When it comes to audio, while the game's sound effects are pretty generic, I would say that Void Source soundtrack is actually its best feature. So most of my praise is actually aimed at a Russian music producer called Darkman007. His Bandcamp page actually has some pretty awesome tunes, especially if you're into chiptune music like me. So now it's that time once again where we get on to rating the game. Now I give games a rating out of 5 stars, which is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay and whether I feel it offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating, I'm going to be giving Void Source 1 out of 5 stars. From all appearances, the game was a Steam game which had long been abandoned but made the jump to Switch, as it's clearly an easier platform to flog shit onto unsuspecting buyers. If you're a fan of shmups, stay clear of this one despite its low asking price, as I still don't think it's worth a play unless you can get it on sale for a better quid. You can get Void Source from the UK Switch eShop for £4.99, or from the US eShop for $5.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. And that's it Starseekers for this review of Void Source, so hit that like button if it helped you out, and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, as I post Switch related content and reviews every few days. As always, leave your comments and opinions down below where I always try to reply to them, and jump onto the Starseekers Discord server to say hello. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.